Hello everyone. Uh, once again, my name is Maciej Wilk. I'm Chief Operating Officer of, of LOT Polish Airlines. I, I work at LOT since 2013. Uh, previously, I, I used to work in, in PwC, in corporate finance, so quite uh, an orthodox uh, uh, development for, from, uh, from finance to, to, to airline operations, but uh, uh, well, sometimes it, it, it happens like this. But uh, I'm very glad to be here. I'm very glad to, 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 to have a chance to, to meet you and to, to talk to you about a lot about the vision market. And uh, I'll also present you with a, let's say, mini case study regarding uh, our recent development in Lithuania, which is, which is Kaunas route. The, the first uh, connection from Kaunas um, uh, to, to a hub. Okay, so <coughs> starting from the market background, uh, I think we live in quite exciting times uh, because uh, for many, many years uh, aviation industry was very much concentrated uh, in the West, yeah, globally. Uh, right now, since 20, 25 years, we, we observe the aviation, let's say, center of gravity moving eastwards. Uh, Again, globally, because of the developments that you observe in China, in India, basically in, in Asia. But the very same uh, kind of uh, phenomenon you can observe in, uh, in Europe. 25 years ago, uh, airline industry was very much concentrated in, in, in Western Europe. But since, uh, since uh, at least uh, 2004, but actually maybe, maybe longer, uh, we see a boom in, in uh, Central Eastern Europe and then uh, market uh, growing significantly faster than, than in Western Europe. Therefore, this again center of gravity uh, moving towards, towards Central uh, Europe. And uh, actually there is <coughs> quite a lot of obstacles and quite a lot of challenges that our friends from Western Europe face. Uh, so first of all, I'm sure most of you or all of you have, have uh, had the pleasure to travel via Frankfurt or Munich or Paris, you know how much overcrowded these aircraft can be, how, how uh, ineffective they are in, in a, in, from the operations perspective. Uh, th that's not all, uh, because uh, in Western Europe we have uh, restrictions in air traffic control capacity. We suffer uh, because of this very much this year especially. Um, we have high labor costs, we have strikes. so. All kinds of things that, that uh, makes Western Europe difficult for, for development of aviation market. On the other hand, in our part of Europe, we have uh, around nearly 20 countries with 180 million people living in, 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 this, in these countries. We have 15 cities of, our, of more than 1 million um, uh, inhabitants and a few dozens more with, um, uh, if, with 500,000 plus. Uh, we have our economies growing at least twice as, uh, as, uh, as fast as in Western Europe and it drives uh, in, uh, growth of aviation industry, I'll talk about it in a second. Um, and of course we, we are much more flexible, we have much more flexible labor law and it helps, it helps development of aviation industry. This cre creates a high potential for development of aviation industry in our part of, of Europe. Uh, now, this is more academic, uh, so on this, on this uh, screen you can see kind of matrix when we compare uh, what's the propensity to fly, meaning what is the ratio between number of flights, no, number of airline passengers to the population of a country. So for example, if Poland has 40 million uh, people, and there is 40 million airline passengers, the propensity to fly is one. Yeah. Uh, on the, um, the bottom axis, we have uh, GDP per capita. And see how, uh, what's, the, what's the correlation here. It's, it's, it's evident yeah? that the, the, the more, uh, the richer the, the society gets, the um, uh, willingness to travel, willingness to use airline services is, is immediately growing. And uh, what does it mean to, for Poland, for Lithuania, for the whole region? It means that we have 
great, great potential to, to develop. Uh, this is an example of Poland, but you see, you can see what, what uh, path Poland has, has uh, witnessed during the last 10 years. Right now we are approaching uh, a ratio of one, as I was saying. So, so statistically, one Polish citizen, uh, or a Polish citizen travels once a year with, with an airline. But you can see that in Switzerland the ratio is five. In the United States, four. In Sweden, uh, Spain, Netherlands, Austria, this is around three tra travels per, per year. Again, for us it's just a matter of time. We need to do our job every day. Our job meaning all of us, yeah, whatever we, we do on a daily basis. We must, we must increase GDP, get ourselves richer, and this only will help the um, uh, aviation industry to, to grow. Uh, from what you see here, Actually, if we are talking about CE matching the, um, uh, the propensity to fly of Western Europe, we, we we're talking about the potential of a of our market to quadruple, so may, make it, it four times bigger than it is right now. I think that doubling the size of the market is a matter of the ne of next five, ten years, if we're talking about growth, growth rates every year of seven to fifteen percent in each of the countries. Yeah, so this is, this is about the macroeconomic view. And um, unfortunately, I don't have Lithu Lithuania um, uh, highlighted here, but again, uh, Lithuania is, high, is slightly above Poland. It's slightly above one ratio, so it's around, I think, somewhere here. Still a long way to go to, to match Western Europe. Now, about the, the competition. Uh, it is a global trend for, for airlines to consolidate. We've seen that in the United States and uh, for most, uh, in most cases what happens in USA often is repeated uh, afterwards in the rest of the, of, the, of the world. And we see it to some extent in Western Europe already because uh, we do have International Airlines Group which is the owner of British Airways, Iberia, uh, Vueling and Level. So they are, they have very strong foundations in Great Britain and, and uh, oh, and uh, Erlingus. So, so they have very strong foothold in, in uh, Great Britain, Ireland and um, uh, Spain. We have Air France KLM. We have Lufthansa Group, obviously. Uh, we have outside European Union Aeroflot in, in, in Russia, Turkish Airlines in Turkey. But here between Baltic City, uh, B B Baltic uh, Sea and uh, Mediterranean Sea, we have around a dozen of national air uh, um, flag, flag carriers. And uh, consolidation in some form is, uh, is, is a must. It will happen. I don't know if it happened in, in five years or, or in ten years, but uh, this, this market picture will change. Um, of course, as a as a as lot, we would like to be an active player in this consolidation. However, we are more than aware of the fact that even us being the, by far the biggest player in this in this region from the uh, full service carriers, uh, we are still too small to actually uh, survive in the long term. Probably, this is why our strategy is all about growth. We need to grow our company to to have not. 8 million passengers, but 15 million passengers, and, that, and this gives us a real chance to, to, to be longer successful in the long term, as well as um, take an active part in this consolidation of the, of the region. Uh, of course, there is uh, an obvious question to this would be what about lo low-cost carriers? Because the truth is that uh, low-cost carriers are particularly st strong in Central Eastern Europe. Uh, it is true. From my perspective, full service uh, carrier like LOT uh, is not necessarily always a competitor to, to Wizard or Ryanair or, or such, such players. It's, our markets segments are over, overlapping to some extent, but, but not entirely. Uh, a businessman who wants to travel from Vilnius to Paris and come back within one day uh, he will rather choose uh, choose lot. A 
student from uh, from uh, Vilnius who wants to travel to Singapore will obviously consider a lot and not not Wizard or, or, or Ryanair. So there are segments in which we do not compete. There are segments in the, in which we we compete to some extent. Uh, but also, we shouldn't expect that the low cost carriers will take 100% of the market. Today, their, their penetration of the Central Eastern European market is around 40%. It is a higher per, per penetration than, than in uh, Western Europe, which is closer to 30%. And uh, my gut feeling is that it will rather stabilize at this, at this level and perhaps even go, uh, go lower in 15 years' horizon. Again, because the, the richer the society, the more in, uh, disposable income you have, the more possibilities you have to, to actually consider using not a low-cost carrier, but, but a full-service car carrier. Uh, perhaps if we have some, some more time, I, I can also elaborate a bit about our uh, venture in Estonia. Uh, I guess you, you know the brand Nordica, uh, which is the uh, Estonian uh, national carrier, the new Estonian uh, national carrier after the collapse of Estonian air, uh, airways or airlines. Airlines. Uh, this is this is quite an interesting um, venture because it is it is something completely new, very innovative. Uh, because what the Estonians did after the collapse of Estonian airlines, they didn't um, come up with a completely new airline. They. Um, they put in life uh, a sort of virtual airline, and this is actually Nordica. Nordica is not an airline, but it is a, I would say it's closer to a travel agency than an airline. They, they design the network, they do sales, they do marketing, but they are not airline from the AOC perspective. They do not hold an uh, air operator certificate. Air operator certificate is held by their subsidiary Regional Jet Limited, and Regional Jet Limited is a company in which Lot has 49% stake. Yeah, so it is kind of our joint venture. And the fact is that that uh, in uh, CRJ 900s branded Lot and Nordica are often flying to Vilnius. Uh, so this is a <coughs> Regional Jets aircraft. So the aircraft that belongs both to us and Estonians and it flies a slot, but the very same aircraft can go to Tallinn and then do some, uh, some routes out of Tallinn. Interestingly, all flights out of Tallinn, for example, Tallinn Brussels is under lot designator. So it's formally from, let's say, legal point of view, it is still lot flight, but it's only branded as Nordica. Yeah? So I don't want to get uh, much uh, into much more details, it's quite elaborate, but it's also quite, quite, uh, as I said, innovative. And, and I think this is kind of a model that, that might be, might prove uh, effective in not only in Estonia, but in some other places in, in our part of the world, especially in, in countries that are objectively too small to, to handle having a full, full scope air carrier of your own. Uh, right, so now continuing. Uh, a few words about our our company. Uh, sorry. So first of all, we are not Polish Airlines, so we are a state-owned company. Airlines operating since 1929. So next January we will celebrate our 90th uh, birthday. Uh, our mission or, and our goal. As we, as we define it, is that after years of troubles, we are not now back on track, back in, in black. And we, our ambition is to become a Central Eastern European network carrier of choice. Yeah, so it's not our ambition to, to take market share away from Wizard or Ryanair, but to fight for, for passengers who are uh, seeking other certain uh, values out of our travel, like frequency, like, like product, and especially long haul. Yeah, <coughs> our, our, our biggest ambition is to become, or sustain a position of, of a long haul, uh, the biggest um, uh, long haul carrier out of uh, uh, Central Eastern Europe. 
And this is a segment that we particularly invest in and, and that we particularly develop. Uh, we are a part of, of Star Alliance and uh, in terms of fleet, fleet is something that we constantly develop uh, today. Um, we, today we have 62 aircraft. It is a mix of Bombardier Q400, Embraer 737, including brand new 737 MAX 8s, uh, and our Crown <coughs> Jewels 787s, Dash 8s and Dash 9s. Um, as I said, we are very, strong, very strongly developing our, our, our fleet since two years. Uh, in 2019, we will add 15 new aircraft, including four 787s and 11 737s. And uh, we will be fast approaching uh, 100 aircraft around in, uh, in around th three years from now. This, of course, um, uh, drives the, gr the growth of the, of the network. And I'll talk about network here. Uh, we are a hub carrier. Yeah. So a hub carrier means that our business model is completely different from what we see in Ryanair or Wizard or any other LCC uh, because their core business <coughs> is to find niche and put, uh, put supply into it. So for example, if, if Ryanair guess that, that there will be enough people from Vilnius traveling to Palermo to fill one flight per week, they would do it. What we must do is to bring as many people from various places in the region to a hub in Warsaw, do it at, at the, same, the same time, and allow these people to, to connect in Warsaw and to, and to head to other places in, in, uh, in our network. So uh, the network is constructed in a way that we have waves during, during the day. There are six waves during the, the, the day. And it works like this, that we start the day with aircraft spending their night outside Warsaw in various places in the region. So I can tell you it's Tallinn, Riga, Vilnius, Kaunas, Minsk, Lviv, Kiev, Yerevan, Tbilisi, all, the, all, these, all these places in the, in the uh, eastern part of, of the continent, they depart relatively early from, from, from the overnight, 6 o'clock, five, uh, 5 o'clock. They fly into Warsaw. Because of, of the time difference, they land in Warsaw around 6 a.m. And the aircraft get back to Warsaw. There is a one-hour turnaround. And the same aircraft fly to Western Europe, to London, Paris, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Brussels, many, many more places, with those people uh, who came to Warsaw Hub from, from the eastern part of the continent, and of course supplied with the passengers uh, originally from, from Warsaw. So this wave to Western Europe departs at 7 a.m., 8 a.m. 8 Two hours, we have 10 a.m., one hour turnaround, 11 a.m., the aircraft come back. It's 1 p.m. And at 2 p.m. are there is our Asian long hauls traveling to Beijing, traveling to Tokyo, traveling to Seoul. And again the second eastern wave. People coming back from their from their stays in, in Western Europe are get, are uh, brought back home in Central Eastern Europe. Then the flights get back to to Warsaw. Again, there is after afternoon wave to, to uh, Western Europe, and um, lastly the uh, the night wave back to, to to all those places when the when the aircraft stay overnight. Uh, of course, in the middle of the day, around 5 p.m., we have our uh, most important flights, long calls to North America, and. Uh, and these flights are mostly filled with the second, second eastern, eastern wave. Today we fly to, to New York, to, to, to Chicago, Toronto, and uh, Los Angeles. Next summer we will launch uh, Miami. So we will have in total five cities in, the, in uh, North America, sir. Uh, 
Yeah, and if you, the, the key aspect of the hub and spoke um, uh, business model is that all these aircraft need to get to the airport at one time. Yeah, so there, there is 20, 30 aircraft arriving within one hour to, to the aircraft, to the airport, sorry, and 20, 30 uh, air, aircraft leaving the, the airport at the same time. Therefore, the, um, uh, the number of passengers, therefore, I would say it differently. At 2 p.m., the airport might be completely empty, but one hour later, it will be packed with people. Huge queues everywhere, and uh, you know many, many flights operated at the very same time. It creates a lot of operational challenges, which I'm responsible for. Um, and, uh, and the real question is how to make it work. Yeah? Because uh, obviously, there are, as I said, times that, 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 the, that there is nothing happening and then immediately there is there is a peak hour and and, and the challenges is very very big uh, talking about the network we have also a new development which is which is direct long haul flights from budapest to new york and chicago this is something that we implemented in in may this year uh, and we based this project on the fact that uh, malev which is which was the national carrier of Hungary gone uh, has gone bankrupt in 2012. Hungarians didn't have their their national uh, carrier since then. <coughs> Only Wizard is partially uh, Hungarian, and they lost their long haul connectivity to to the U.S., which was very important to them. And we actually looked at the numbers, and we found out that uh, that the market point-to-point -point, uh, market from Budapest to New York is actually bigger than from Warsaw to New York. And we had twice daily flights from Warsaw to, to, to New York all, all, the, all the year round, and there was none from Budapest. So we came up with a conclusion that actually the market in Budapest enough is enough to sustain four weekly flights from Budapest to, to New York without any feed, without any hub structure like, like we have in, in, uh, in Warsaw. Right now we are in a fifth month of operation out of Budapest and I must say that this, this, this is a challenging project but we are extremely happy that we did it and this is a major strategic ch chance for our company to, to build a second leg in, in the east, um, southern part of the continent as well. Of course we do not exclude additional let's say, focus cities. One of them might be, uh, I would say, it might be Tallinn to some extent, but under the different brand. We have some uh, operations out of Krakow, but uh, I would say that we do not exclude development in other cities as well in the, in the region, not necessarily in Poland. Uh, right. Uh, right now, uh, also a few words about the history. Uh, let's say more financial history. Um, as I said, the history of Lot is extremely long. I won't bore you with it with these ninety years of, 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 of history. But but the recent past is that between two thousand four and two thousand twelve, it was a complete um, di di disaster. Yes, so the company was consequently making huge losses, like hundred million euro per year. We had a uh, we had a, a few years in which we, we were selling some of our assets just to just to get liquidity for for survival, and uh, this ultimately ended in two thousand twelve, when having no assets, the company needed to ask the the uh, state for for state aid for one hundred fifty million euro uh, direct cash support in order to sustain operations. We got this money. Uh, I was actually involved in this uh, as a from from PwC. I was I was I was writing the restructuring plan for Lot, which was later submitted to European Commission. And uh, luckily, we went through through hell with European Commission. But ultimately, they approved our, our restructuring plan and they granted us approval for the for the state aid that we received. And uh, today, after this couple of years, I must say that, that we proved that, that the Commission was, uh, was right to, to, to trust us because 
you know, I don't want to sound too enthusiastic about what we, we did, but but it was a major success. This turnaround that we did in Lot was uh, was a one of the most spectacular, I would say, uh, turnarounds that, that that was recently observed in airline industry, because out of the company that was making hundred million euro losses every every year, uh, we made now a company that makes hundred million euro profit every year, and. Uh, and we keep growing. Our company, since two years, is the fastest growing airline in Europe. We increase our capacity 40% every year. Uh, in 2015, we had 4 million passengers, and this year we're going to have 9. Uh, next year, 11. Uh, and actually, next year, we will become larger airline than, than uh, Austrian Airlines, for example. So, things getting serious. Um, and still, we think that this is a scale not not not, not big enough uh, to be long term sustainable. Therefore, we need more growth. We need more uh, connections, more 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 flights, more aircraft. Um, and in order to sustain it, there is a hot public discussion in Poland, uh, but uh, we absolutely support it. Uh, when we when it we when we proved that our growth is possible, that we can be a profitable, long-standing uh, company, uh, we put a, a light on the fact that that Warsaw Airport is insufficient for our growth. Uh, it is a fact. Actually, in 2019, we won't be able to develop the, as quickly as we hoped for in Warsaw because the, there is simply no enough capacity in, in the Warsaw Chopin Airport. Uh, there might be some, some, there will be some investment made in, in Warsaw Chopin Airport, but it will take two years from now. Uh, the ultimate solution for this is a complete new airport, a greenfield project for an airport constructed and, and uh, planned for transfers and uh, something that will be, uh, bring a completely new uh, quality to, to European air travel in terms of, of, of transfers. N not, not a nightmare of, 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 of Frankfurt or, or, or uh, Paris, but something that we rather see in, in Seoul or Singapore if we, if we, if we connect in those, in, those, in those cities. It can be done, it will be done. Actually, we are at the stage of, of having an official approval from the Polish government that, that they want to do this, uh, this, this project. The airport will be located around 40 kilometers outside Warsaw, westwards out of Warsaw, between Warsaw and Łódź, by the, by the highway. Uh, the key part of the project is that this airport will be connected uh, with uh, railways, with mom all of the of the of the biggest uh, Polish cities like Gdańsk, Kraków, Katowice, Poznań, Wrocław, potentially high sp high speed uh, um, 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 uh, railway. Our prime minister is even saying that there should be a hyperloop uh, between War uh, Warsaw and, and the airport at least. Uh, and uh, and uh, we are keeping our fingers crossed for this project to to continue because this is a game changer and actually uh, that would be so much of a difference. Uh, to have this kind of a greenfield project cons uh, constructed, not only for lot, but for all these 180 million pe people who, who want to travel and want to have the best possible uh, conditions to do that. The cost of the investment around 10 billion uh, euro without the railway part. Uh, is, it, is it a lot or is it not a lot? Uh, I would say if, if, if Poland spends three times more every year for for pensions then i guess it should be it should be doable especially that you do not have to spend all this money in one year it is a 10 10 year pro project the completion is 2027 and this is something that we that needs to be done for our region to develop and for for lot to develop right so now I'd like to talk to you about the, the case of, of, uh, of the connection between Warsaw and Kaunas. Uh, especially I'll elaborate a bit how we came up with this, with this idea, what, uh, what data did we use to, to come out, to, to decide to open this route, and how the route is performing after a couple of months. 
So, first of all, uh, you know, obviously due to geographic closeness of, of, of uh, Poland and Lithuania, uh, we, we, we treat Lithuania as one of our core markets. And it's quite, quite obvious because actually for it is, Poland is on the way to Western Europe from Lithuania. So it's quite, quite clear that it's, it's good to, to provide as much connectivity to Lithuania via, via, via Warsaw as, as possible. We observe the fact that that there are three major civil civil airports in Lithuania, out of which Vilna is by far the the biggest. Uh, it was last year that data, so I suppose this year is more than four million uh, passengers. Kaunas in, in 2016 was 700,000 passengers, and uh, Palanga was 300,000 passengers. Uh, we already operated to. Uh, Palanga since uh, 2016, six times per, per week, and uh, we operated to Vil uh, Vilnius since 1932, uh, uh, 34 times uh, per week, and Kaunas was left without um, uh, air connection. Uh, what we spotted first of all is that literally no one was flying out of uh, Kaunas except of Ryanair. No one. Uh, the, okay, there were some flights by Wizard, but ninety-five percent of the of the of the traffic was Ryanair. Uh, this created a major problem because there was literally no data on where people from Kaunas are actually traveling, because we as airlines do have quite sophisticated data sources about. Uh, um, uh, travels of, 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 of the people um, so for example I can perfectly know how many passengers are traveling out of Kishinev in Moldova and in which directions and via which hubs but if there are no traffic out of, out of Kaunas then I am literally blind I don't know where these people uh, fly uh, what we however assumed is that because Kaunas is relatively close to Vil Vilnius, it's 100 kilometer, then there must be a natural ten tendency for, for people out of Kaunas to drive to, to, to Vilnius or go by train, I don't know, uh, and take an um, um, airplane out of, out of Vilnius and travel whether, whenever uh, they, they want. We looked deeper into, into this data this is just summary of it, but, but uh, we did kind of comparative uh, analysis. Uh, we took Kaunas, we compared it to, to Vilnius and Palanga, also Riga, Tallinn, and four cities in Poland, Wrocław, Poznań, Szczecin, and Rzeszów. Um, Kaunas is around 300,000 uh, inhabitants and around a million uh, people living in the proximity of Kaunas. So it makes this city quite similar to Szczecin in Poland, bigger than, than Rzeszów, at least in, in the city population, and more or less comparable to Poznań and Wrocław. In all these cities, we have 27 flights per, per, per week, 19, 24, 42, and from Kaunas, zero. And so that was, uh, that was uh, uh, a clue number one. A clue number two was, uh, was what is the ratio between number of passengers out of the certain airport compared to the to the number of, of people living in the city? So again, this kind of um, uh, propensity to fly in a given 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 uh, uh, city. So you can see here that in Rzeszów, on average, the the, the ratio is 3.5. In Poznań, 3.17. In in Wrocław, 3.78. In Tallinn, Riga, the capital city is 4.1, 5.3. So Riga, the, the hub, uh, hub structure by, by Air Baltic, so, so understandable that the, that the number is, is bigger. Kaunas, 2.4, less than any of these cities. Vilnius, 7.13. What's, what's going on? Why, why Vilnius is, is, is standing out so, so much? And obviously, we treated that as a, as a confirmation that 
indeed there are people from somewhere else than only Vilnius using Vilnius Airport as their ga gateway to the, to the world. Uh, we also looked at P um, uh, GDP per capita. So count us, 11,000 11, uh, euros per, per year. So actually, the, again, city much more, uh, much richer than, than uh, Rzeszów or Szczecin, similar to Poznań and Wrocław. And again, all these flights per, per week compared to zero in Kaunas. So based on this, we decided to, to open a route to, to Kaunas. Lot was the first uh, uh, full service carrier to, to, that decided to, to do that. We proposed uh, six times per, year, per week in a comfortable schedule. Uh, actually, this one is mixed. It should be the other way around. Uh, we do it in a schedule in which we leave Warsaw at 10.35pm. Uh, we arrive to Kaunas 45 uh, minutes after midnight. Uh, and uh, we depart out of Kaunas at 6.15 in the morning and because of the time difference we arrive in Warsaw at 6.25. So you see uh, we have flights to, to, to Western Europe at 7.15, 7.20, 7.30 so it creates a very good connection to Western Europe and the other way around as well because Western Europe is coming back to Warsaw at 2100, 2120, something like this. So the schedule is there the, the, um, uh, the flight is served by Bombardier Q478 uh, seats on board and all in all we planned it to be a proposal for the business in Kaunas to have an opportunity to have even a one day trip to in and out of Western Europe of course it is a stretch to wake up at 4 and come back home at 2 but, uh, but it is doable and we know that people are, are doing it uh, and uh, as a result of it, we started in late May and uh, of course you always need two or three months for the route to kick in, but in September already we see 70% uh, load factor uh, on the flight. And what is particularly uh, um, uh, good for us is that 83% of the passengers are actually transferring, so these are not people traveling between Warsaw and Kaunas, but maybe there, there are eight or ten people between, that are actually traveling from Kaunas to Warsaw, but all the rest is traveling to, uh, to Western Europe. And uh, you can see on the map only top 25 ONDs, so destinations out of Kaunas. It's all over the place. It's Stockholm, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Hamburg, Amsterdam, Brussels, Düsseldorf, Luxembourg, Venice, Zagreb, Belgrade, uh, Bucharest, everywhere. And until, until our move, the only place that you could actually get out of Kaunas was uh, London, in a good schedule, because I know there were once, once, uh, once per week flights uh, to, I don't know, Copenhagen, yeah, but, but uh, in this reliable everyday schedule that, that that's, that's the, the first time uh, Kaunas got connected to, to all these places. We see a significant share of corporate passengers uh, and I think we treat, it, we treat it as a success and I think that we have good chances to, to actually increase the schedule in, in, uh, in the coming, coming seasons. And the obvious uh, move is, is to establish a second uh, l um, uh, flight per day somewhere in the middle of the day so that uh, people from Kaunas could get a chance to travel to Asia and North America with, uh, with Lot. Yeah, so so uh, it would be probably leaving Kaunas around 2 p.m., arriving to Warsaw at 2 p.m., and then we have flight around 4, 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, to, to North America. North America is arriving to Warsaw at, uh, at noon. Okay, so we will have to leave 1.30, let's say, out of, out of Warsaw, arrive here to 2.30, 3 p.m. Uh, depart out of Kaunas, and 3 p.m. Uh, in Warsaw. Very good schedule. This is, this is something that would work for long-haul transfers. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is it, what I had to say. Oh, the one more thing. Uh, 
the open question how many uh, hidden jewels are there still in Central Eastern Europe. This is just a ideas from the top of my head of cities that might be in a similar situation of, of, of uh, Kaunas. But as the example of Kaunas show, if there is a good product, uh, and the connection to, to a well-established hub, then immediately there is a chance for, excel, for a success. Actually, out of all these places, we recently opened uh, Lublin to Warsaw. It's a 120 kilometers flight, but still it's, it's, it's doing well. Zielona uh, Góra, Kaunas, and together with Kaunas, we opened also Zaporozhye. That's uh, another airport which didn't have uh, any full service carrier, but, but it played, uh, played out uh, very well, actually even better than, than, than Kaunas. But there are many, many other places, like Lipawa, Dyneburg, uh, uh, Łódzk, uh, Ivano-Frankowsk, Debrecen, Brno, Ostrava. I could go and on with, uh, with examples. So I hope that in, that in two or three years, a lot will be present in most of, most of these places and we will further strengthen our Warsaw hub and as a target also a new airport in the central of, of Poland. So this is it. Thank you very much. Comply with us. And actually, uh, and actually if we're here, I'd also like to say that not only come fly to, with us, but also come work with us, if you, if you please, because we are very open for, for for uh, new recruitments, especially from, from such esteemed aviation schools like, like, like this one. Actually, I have uh, a head of uh, HR with me, Magda. Hello, so if you, have, if you have any, any questions to, to us afterwards, just, just ask. Yeah, and if you have any questions not necessarily connected with HR, please also Shoot, I, ca I guess we can have some open session right now if, if, you, if there's a need. You spoke about uh, Budapest, uh, New York yeah. uh, deal. It's very successful. Uh, what about another uh, cities in our region who can, can be interesting for, for like? As I said, th this is, you cannot be too greedy here because uh, it creates a lot of complexity. Yeah, and complexity is an enemy of efficiency. So we, we decided to go with this exper experiment. It's still an experiment in Budapest. If it plays out well, we can add some flights into Budapest and perhaps in two or three years develop a small hub in Budapest. But uh, I wouldn't envisage you know, having this kind of, of things in 10 different cities in the region. That's just too complicated. That would create such a mess that would, uh, that would start bringing, bringing losses. So of course we can, I think there is a chance to do some network tricks like, uh, like traveling from Warsaw to Barcelona, then from Barcelona to Vilnius, from Vilnius to Barcelona and from, from Barcelona to Warsaw. So it's still, in terms of a schedule, it doesn't make much of a difference, but uh, but it doesn't mean adding so much complexity uh, by by building up uh, another basis. And that's 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 a major difference between the full service car carrier like us, who bring uh, benefits out of economies of scale in a single base, compared to low cost carriers who has bases everywhere, uh, with one or two aircraft ba based in 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 a in a given city. spoke about consolidation. Yeah. Uh, Lufthansa Group, Kalem, Air France, it's international company. Uh, what about load uh, expense, uh, expense in uh, our region? Maybe a consolidation with Ukrainian, with Romanian, with uh, any? You know, w we did this, this business with Nordica and uh, it's still uh, being developed because it is a pioneer f thing. You don't have much examples of such cooperation anywhere in the world. I think personally that it might be replicated somewhere, I don't know, in Croatia. Yeah? First, first, from the top of my head. But um, you need to have a partner there, a willing party uh, over there. I, I don't think that 
that consolidation via mergers or acquisition is the right thing to do here in the region because most, most of these airlines has their own problems. And also uh, one of the major fundamental sources of effectiveness is unification of the fleet. And if you look at uh, fleet structure of each of these uh, flag carriers, you will see a complete mess, a complete, as we say, it's Christmas tree. So ATRs, Q400s, uh, Antonovs, uh, 737s, 300, 400, 500, 700, 800, 900, Maxis, uh, Embraers, uh, Airbuses, CRJs, that's, that's just uh, too much of a mess. That's much easier to, to develop organically, enter new markets than, than buying uh, competitors. Hello. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Also, thanks for my friend from Konas, which is having every morning, every Monday morning, two and a half hours to come to Vilnius. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and he's frequent flyer, but just to Warsaw. Uh, my question is about uh, the, the Embraer future in, in, in Lot Fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I, I know that they are not very young. Uh, okay, they are still young, but but uh, are you planning development? Because you you told about development and and purchases uh, uh, of of new fleet the, for long haul mm -hmm. for the ball seven three seven. Are there uh, developments planned in this part of, of the fleet? Well, to some extent, yes, because uh, this year we took delivery of six Embraer one ninety fives, and we will take deliveries of four Embraer one nineties. Uh, in December, mm -hmm. we needed this uh, Embraer 190s because this is a, a type of an aircraft that is certified to fly to London City, and this is uh, a major project of ours for early 2020, 2019 to establish a di direct uh, flight between Warsaw and London City. Uh, and also, we announced Budapest to, to, to London City. Uh, it is uh, it is one of the only aircraft types that can fly to the London City because of the steep approach. Yes, yeah, that it is uh, certified to, to do that. Yeah. They, they have a short runway and necessity to, to, to have a steep approach and steep, steep ascent. Uh, and this is what Embraer 190 is certified to do. Uh, I'm sure you, you, you were rather asking about the, the, the future of the segment, uh, about uh, Embraer E2 or, yes, uh, E2 or uh, Airbus 220 Airbus, or yes. so known as uh, C-Series, but uh, we don't have the... I don't know, maybe Sukhoi? <laughs> no, I think Sukhoi <laughs> won't, be, won't be the answer, but, but we are still uh, considering. Yes, uh, for, for there are certain issues with the engines, for example, mm -hmm. both for, on uh, C-Series and on uh, Embraer E2. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, geared to turbofan, new kind of engine. So we are, we are, our position is right now wait and see to to have all the problems solved and then do some some uh, dec take decisions. Uh, I think the natural way would be to to start taking Embraer C two at some at some point because there there is much commonality between Embraer first generation and second generation but we absolutely do not say no to to um, uh, uh, to former C series what we know for sure is that we want to unify the fleet because once again fleet unification is one of the major factors for for effectiveness of the airline we know that our fleet composure of, of fourth uh, aircraft type is 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 suboptimal and this is why we will get get out of uh, Bombardier Q400s, but it will happen in a couple of years horizon because you must know that once you enter a uh, operating lease of an aircraft, it's not that easy just to say take this aircraft away. It's not. It's it's got. It can't be done. Oh. Yeah. So so this is how it works. Uh, the, my second question would be about the concentration. Yeah. Do you think there are chances that some external Big player will come to concentrate the the the, the, the East European market. Uh, I, I I know there was rumors about Turkish um, some trying to, to buy some some uh, islands. It was not successful as I know, but there are other chance to. Turkish was even said to to buy lots. So you know I know these stories, but uh, well. 
I think there are limited chances for this because uh, we have uh, a regulation within the European Union that the party outside the European Union cannot take controlling stake of an airline. So that's a major obstacle for, for Turkish or Middle Eastern carriers or uh, Asian carriers. Do I see um, Lufthansa or Air France um, um, creating a hub in Warsaw, Vilnius, Prague or Budapest? No, not at all. Absolutely not. That, 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 that they, w they would never do that. Do I see them trying to buy Lot or, or uh, CSA or Tarom? Maybe. That's, that's something that they might take into, into, into consideration. But of course, there, there need to be a willing party on the other end. <laughs> of course. Uh, I think that, that for many years, um, Western European big players were rather thinking that they should connect as many uh, places in Central Eastern Europe to their hubs and leave the rest to the, to the low-cost carriers. So no one was really considering any of, of these uh, national flag carriers to, 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 to be sustainable. But I think there is chance for, 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 for a couple of them. I hope that lot will be one of them, but you know, I'm, I'm doing every day, every, every, everything every day to, to make that happen. But of course there is the Ukraine International, which has a very big market behind them. Mm -hmm. Not that rich market, but very big one, 60 million people. Air Baltic is, is doing fine. However, my personal opinion is that, that their financials are questionable and their financial stress strength to sustain this kind of a growth that, that uh, they are announcing. Uh, CSA, I don't know really. The, they, they, they've been uh, purchased by Travel Service, which is owned by Chinese, so, so I guess they will have some, some uh, financing for, for some time. Tarom is... is is in quite a mess but again it's quite a big market behind them so th there might be some 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 uh, let's say airlines with with, uh, with long term sustainability but i can't really say, you know say say the tell for certain what's what what it's going to be for sure i don't see uh, you know a strong presence of any western european uh, airlines here in a form of of creating bases here it will just be sourcing passengers to, the, to their hubs. In terms of low-cost carriers, they will use every niche possible. But again, as I said, I strongly believe that, that uh, not every passenger will be willing to, to, to travel with, with, with Ryanair. And the example of, of Kaunas uh, is, is shows it. Yeah, one weekly flight from between Kaunas and Copenhagen is doesn't doesn't uh, isn't an answer to to what market needs all all market segments. Uh, you know. Yeah, so so this is this is the, the, this is why I think that that there is a market space both for us for local carriers, and we need to somehow uh, you know create this this Central Eastern European market. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Surprisingly. Just a quick comment. I think uh, people could get a bit confused on your schedule. It's actually the first flight yeah. uh, coming out of Kronos is what flight and the last one coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, I said it that, that okay. uh, uh, I mixed it up. Okay, so comment is on me then. Uh, my yeah, so, so it's uh, Kaunas, Warsaw, Warsaw, Kaunas. Yeah. Is purely you know, operational. Uh, obviously, you are operating Dash 8 uh, fleet, quite large one. Uh, it's very high power aircraft, suitable for very harsh environments, let's say high mountains, short fields, and so on. Uh, somehow, Air Baltic and Lot is using that. Uh, it seems a bit, you know, stretch out, you know, while you could be doing the same flights maybe with ATR. Could you give some kind of explanation why actually in this region we see so much of this aircraft? That's a, that's a good question. Actually, if, if I was to choose a turboprop aircraft for a lot, I would go for ATR, uh, ATR 72-600, because it's, it's, it's smaller, uh, lighter, and, um, uh, and burns less fuel. So actually, yes, I think that between Warsaw and, and, uh, and the 
Kaunas not to not to search you know far. Uh, ATR might be the better better suited for uh, aircraft than than ATR. Uh, sorry, ATR than Q400. I don't want to get to, into too much history why Q400 was selected for for lot, but uh, you know it was a decision made in 2011, so I don't really have much influence on this. Uh, even so, as I said, uh, I strongly believe that the target uh, fleet for lot is 787, 737 and Embraer, no turboprop. Because again, it's good to have a, uh, you know, 10 type of aircraft uh, and each of them will be m best suited for, for a individual route. But again, cost of complexity is so high that uh, it's better to, to unify. You have uh, you have uh, pilots, you have cabin crew, which can be uh, all, all certified for free uh, aircraft type only. You have uh, uh, spare parts, you have pool agreements, you have, you have maintenance agreements, uh, simulators. All these things create such a cost burden that, uh, at least in, in the case of LOT, it's much better to, to actually limit the number of aircraft in our fleet and concentrate on these three, three ones that, that, that I thought, thought about. So we can talk in the, in the background as well, <laughs> once we finish. So, okay. Alexander. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.